Hey, hey, it's DJ, and today we're going to be copper modding an RTX 30 series GPU. Now, when I say copper modding, I'm talking about these, these little copper shims, and apparently they're supposed to solve all of our overheating problems on our memory. And if you know about the 30 series memory, you know that GDDR6X gets ridiculously hot whenever it's put under any kind of intensive load. So I wanted to test out little copper little copper squares and see if that magically solves every single one of our overheating issues. Now choosing to use copper over something like thermal paste is a bit riskier because as most of us know, copper is a very good conductor and if you're gonna have something conductive touching something else that's conductive, well, you're going to be having a very bad time. I think the purpose of this experiment is to number one, not have an exploding GPU, number two, have much cooler VRAM temps under load both gaming and mining, and number three, having something that will last in the long term because you don't want these moving around. Alas, if they do move around, we'll run into the shorting issue. With that being said, I think I've found a way that will be good in the long term and provide adequate cooling, all with no issues. Now before we do any modding at all, we're going to run some benchmarks on this 3070 Ti just to see how it kind of performs without any modifications to it. That way we have some sort of baseline to work off of once it is modded. I'm obviously a little concerned here. I'm barely even pushing this card and we're already hitting 108, 106 degrees on the memory. Basically, that means this sucker needs some new freaking copper shims instead of thermal pads because it just loves to overheat. I don't know why. There's a few things you'll need before you can get started modding. The first are copper plates of a specific thickness. The ASUS TUF RTX 3070 Ti has 1.5mm thermal pads, therefore I will be using 1.5mm copper plates. Next, you'll need 70% or greater isopropyl alcohol for cleaning the GPU diet and the memory modules. You'll also need a screwdriver, perhaps a few different sizes depending on your GPU. The ASUS TUF RTX 3070 Ti in particular has a few different sizes of screws. Next, you'll need Kapton tape. Kapton tape is highly resistant to changes in temperature, and more importantly, it's completely non-conductive. There is absolutely zero risk of this tape interfering with our GPU and its operations at all. You'll also need 4 to 5 grams of thermal paste. I am using Arctic MX4, but any reputable brand should work. You'll also want the paste applicator. Lastly, 400 grit sandpaper for sanding down copper plates if they're too pointy. Some copper plates I have found on Amazon have sharp edges, which are definitely not what we want. So of course the first step is going to be removing the screws to get this back plate off. We're going to start with these four screws right here because those ones are directly into the heat sink and through the PCB on these. And then we're going to make our way to of course the little cross plate here. And then we'll take out these over here and the GPU should just come right apart. The actual process for taking apart your specific GPU may differ significantly depending on its model. If you're unsure of how to do that or uncomfortable with doing that, then you can look up a tutorial by looking up your GPU name and then followed by teardown and you should find some good results that walk you through exactly how to do it without destroying your entire beautiful backplate or heatsink or whatever. If you have trouble getting enough torque on these screws, you can always go with the old pliers and screwdriver technique like so. It is quite annoying to have such small screws, but basically you push down and you twist. This should give you a lot more torque to get these small, harder to reach screws out. One thing you may notice is that the way that I unscrew the crossplate is very specific, and that is that I go one, across, two, over. That is if you were starting in the top left, you'd go top left, bottom right, top right, bottom left. Alas, there is just a few more screws to undo until we finally get the great reveal. And this right here is why I was so specific on wanting to use this ASUS TUF Gaming 3070 Ti versus a different GPU. You can see that there is actually a sub heat sink that is exclusively for the memory. And this is both a blessing in the sense that it tells us or will tell us very soon whether or not our copper plates are positioned correctly, but it's also 
not great for cooling, not even gonna lie, it's probably the reason why we were seeing 106 plus degree temperatures earlier. Next, we're gonna undo the fan wires or whatever connectors they may be, and we're gonna focus exclusively on the PCB itself. Okay, so basically the plan here is to remove these pads. You can see that they're a little ripped. We'll just get them cleaned up here, remove the paste, and then we're going to surround these gaps around the memory chips with Kapton tape. You can see here, I've got three different sizes, and we're going to put that around the outside of the chips so that we don't short any components, such as capacitors or resistors. You can see if you look really, really closely here, there are components all around the outside of these chips. We do not want to short those with our little copper shims here. And so begins the somewhat arduous and somewhat annoying process of removing thermal paste, thermal pads from this entire GPU. I won't lie, I don't know of any better way to get it off of this GPU because the pads were literally stuck on there like glue and every time I tried to remove them with my fingers, they would just rip immediately. Which is really great because I did want to reuse these, but you know, I guess you get what you pay for, and I'm not really sure what I paid for here, judging by the fact I was getting 106 degrees Celsius. This is where that isopropyl not for drinking alcohol will come in handy. As you can see, I just apply some to a shop towel, and I wipe off the GPU dye, and I try to get some of the thermal pad residue off of the memory. You'll see the end result in a moment, but it's not too great. That's okay though, if there's a little bit of what looks to be like pieces of thermal pad still all over your memory, I can assure you it will be fine, it will not cause any thermal issues in the long term. This is where we finally add the capped on tape. Now there's a few different ways you can go about this, I personally start from the inside and try to work my way outwards, filling in the gaps as I go. The way that you choose to go about filling in all of the gaps doesn't really matter, it kind of more depends on your risk tolerance. I, for me, do not want to be taking any risks, therefore I filled in every single gap around the memory chips. If you look very closely, you will know that there are some components that are sticking out a little too far for comfort, and those are the ones that we mainly want to be covering up with this capped on tape. To err on the side of safety, you will see that I place capped on tape completely around the outside of every single memory chip so that there is no possibility of making any kind of short anywhere. The next thing I do is a test fit of the copper shims. I kind of want to get an idea of where I want to place them before I actually put them on the GPU. I'm not actually applying them yet, so you see there's no thermal paste, no anything. This is simply a test fit to see where they should be going and if I need to make any adjustments. After that test fit, you can see that I definitely didn't err on the side of extreme caution and add even more freaking capped on tape. Is it capped on or is it capped in? You know, I'm sure you guys can argue about that in the comments. Anyway, this is the finished actual result for the capped on tape. There is no more to be added, and that means now that we've test fit, we can move on to prepping our wonderful little copper shims for usage. Unfortunately, my copper shims did come with some pointy edges, so I'm just going to run over them for about 10 seconds on this 400 grit sandpaper. And then after we've run each one through the sandpaper, we're going to wash them off because look at this. You can see there is copper dust all over these shims now. And what do you know about copper dust? It is conductive. If this copper dust ends anywhere on your GPU, it's basically game over. So give them an extremely thorough wash, wipe them off, make sure they're dry, and get ready to install them into your GPU. We're going to be applying a generous amount of thermal paste to each and every memory die right on top, just like you would the actual GPU die. And then of course, we're gonna put some on the GPU die as well, because, well, if you don't, it's going to turn into a fireball. Anyway, do that, and then next you're gonna spread it all around with the thermal applicators until it's nice and even across the entire surface. This is a very messy process, but it is necessary, so get to pasting. And now it is actually finally time to add the copper shims. We're gonna put the copper shims on each and every spot where there is memory, right on top of the memory, where we just applied all that thermal paste. One thing you'll notice is that I do most of the copper location adjustments here because this is the most convenient time to do it. 
While you can do it in the future, I would advise that you do it here because the next few steps get especially messy and especially irreversible unless you want to mess this all up. Yes, we are now going to add yet another layer of thermal paste, but this time we're not going to spread it out. That is going to be the job of the heatsink, or in this case, the sub heatsink dedicated to the memory. You'll see in a moment whenever we put it on. So one thing I figured I would do is a test fit with the subheat sink attached. You can see that I screw in two screws and then I verify the location of each of the pieces of copper. I don't tighten it down all the way and I move the copper in just the location that I want it. Of course, it's very important that I do this now because this is the last time that I'll ever get to move this copper unless I want to mess all of this up. Now, believe it or not, the modification is basically already finished. Now we just need to completely reassemble the card and we'll get it testing. And after a tremendous amount of pain and stuff, I mean labor, I present to you the copper modded RTX 3070 Ti. You know, it kinda just looks like a normal 3070 Ti, whatever. Anyway, the point is that this has copper inside of it and not thermal pads. So we've just started up here. See, we just loaded up T-Rex. We're at 41 and 60, sitting still at around 62. Now I'm gonna wait for this to calibrate, maybe give it five or 10 minutes to mine, and we'll come back and look at the temperatures then. Okay, look at this, 57.29 mega hash. It's not clock as high as it could be, but look at that, 45 on the core, 64 degrees Celsius on the memory. You can see here in GPU-Z, 64 degrees Celsius. That's a huge freaking difference. Like, that's incredible. You can see here, we got copper, and it's, it's literally night and day. I mean, where we were getting 110 degrees, 64. That is literally incredible. I'd like to believe that the results here completely speak for themselves. If you are struggling with a 30 series GPU and you've tried paste, pads, and just about everything else you can think of, it may be time to consider copper modding. And that's not to say that it's for everyone, after all copper modding carries an innumerable number of risks that pads and paste doesn't, however, you saw 45 degrees Celsius reduction in memory temperatures. That is insane. And it's not like mining is the only application whenever you might have to do this. I know that personally, whenever I'm doing something like an intense cycles blender render, my memory dies in my 3080. So even for someone who's just a workstation user, this might be a good idea for you, especially for creators like myself. In fact, I'd kind of like to know whether or not there's other people crazy enough to try this, that it's not just me. So please leave a comment if you do decide to try it and tell me what GPU you are trying it on. Anyway, that's it from me. I hope you have a wonderful rest of your day or night or whatever time it is for you.